Hello and welcome to the next Josh Nader Plays ranking video. Today I'm going to be ranking all of the bosses in Dark Souls 3 from easiest to hardest. Just a couple of notes before I get started. First of all, this list is only going to include one of the DLCs and that is going to be the Ring City because I did not actually play the other one. The other thing I want to let everybody know is that uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than the Dark Souls Remastered one that I made because uh, some of you may know that this was the first Souls game I ever played. So as you can imagine, some of the bosses that are earlier in the game were actually pretty difficult for me. What I've decided to do is to say how many times I died in my first playthrough and then do a slash and then underneath is the amount of times I died in New Game Plus because I also did that recently. One more thing is that uh, I'm going to leave the audio in the background from these fights and some of them may have commentary because I was in mic parties with friends some of the time when I was playing this game so uh, just be aware of that. So with that out of the way I guess I'll go ahead and jump right in with number 23. And that's going to be Yorm the Giant. Is Yorm ridiculously easy? In my opinion, yes. Is the fight still epic? In my opinion, yes. The only way to die in this battle is if you are unable to find the Storm Ruler in your muddled inventory, but as soon as you equip it, the fight becomes very simple. Dodge his very easily telegraphed attacks, charge the Storm Ruler, and strike. It only takes 5 hits to kill him, and he even staggers after taking a certain amount of damage. The majority of Yorm's attacks involve him swinging or slashing at you with his axe. However, many of his attacks are so slow that you don't even really need to evade through them as long as you're behind him or you stay around his legs. I did die to this boss one time during my first playthrough because uh, I had not sold or gotten rid of any of the weapons in my inventory, so it took me forever to find the Storm Ruler, and I actually got hit twice while I was trying to find it. I have never actually attempted killing this boss without the Storm Ruler, but I imagine that would be a bit more difficult, even though his attacks are very easy to avoid, and I think that makes this boss undoubtedly the easiest. Number 22, Ancient Wyvern. This fight can either be extremely epic or very anticlimactic based on how you look at it. One thing's for sure, I'm glad I knew what to do when this boss flew in. I imagine fighting it the old-fashioned way by just swinging your sword at it would be pretty damn hard, but I prefer the one-shot kill you can inflict by running past a few mildly aggressive man serpents and plunging down at the giant dragon. The only thing you really need to worry about in this fight is making sure that you stay on your toes and don't let the man serpents catch up with you. As long as you sprint all the way through this area with the staircases and uh, the extremely annoying man serpent that throws the axe, you should be just fine. I did embarrassingly die once during Journey 2 by missing the plunge attack. It was a very anticlimactic and also embarrassing move, so make sure the wyvern is in position before you jump. While it certainly felt awesome to plunge and uh, one-shot this giant beast, I feel like it would have been more cool if this boss was like Calamite from Dark Souls Remastered. That boss actually presented a true challenge, while this one is just more of finding your way through a maze and then one-shotting the boss. Number 21, Deacons of the Deep. Now I think it's safe to say that I got pretty cocky after absolutely destroying this creepy congregation during my first playthrough. The deacons pretty much just stood there, and I figured out pretty quickly how to kill them. It wasn't until Journey 2 that I found out the hard way that they can curse you. I think it's kind of a cheap way to kill the player, but it's the only real threat in this fight aside from the potential gang rape if you get completely surrounded. Whack the deacon that's surging red and take out the ones that will occasionally try to curse you and you should have no problem in this fight. I don't hate this boss, but it is a nuisance and is far from the best gang fight in the Souls series, at least that I've played. Number 20, Crystal Sage. I actually really like this boss. I think it's a nice way to top an area that was very meh in my opinion. Yeah, I was not a huge fan of the Road of Sacrifices. The Crystal Sage is only difficult if you let it be difficult. When the fight begins, run right in and dish in as much damage as you can and the Sage shouldn't really be able to do much but teleport and repeat the process. When it starts to clone, you have two options. Kill the clones or just go for the OG Purple Sage. Both options seem to bring me equal success. If you're getting pelted with spells, the pillars and walls should be enough to shield you while you heal up. Honestly, the sage's attacks aren't even very accurate, so you can pretty much just run around and attack whatever you want, and just uh, roll every once in a while to avoid the stronger spells. This boss reminds me a little bit of a slightly stronger version of Pinwheel. And even though that boss was terrible, there's just something about the sage that makes me want to fight it again after I finally beat it. Number 19, Iodex Gunder. When I first fought this boss, I was thinking I would be hopeless at this game. 
I might as well remind everyone that this was the first Souls game that I ever played. Now, after some practice, he's pretty easy. The fight is nothing fancy until phase two. But if you keep swinging as he transforms, Ayudex should be dead before he even has a chance to counter you. In phase one, he has a couple of very inaccurate swings that are pretty damn easy to dodge. Phase 2 is a lot more difficult in my opinion, with him turning into an abyss beast that can really hit you hard. But as I said before, if you can output enough damage, you'll have him dead before he even really has a chance to fight back. And he's dead. Number 18, Vort of the Boreal Valley. I think it's important to once again here mention that this is the second boss that I ever fought in the Souls series. Now, this was before I really knew about iframes, so I didn't really know that you were supposed to evade through attacks or into attacks. I thought you were just supposed to get away from them when they tried to swing at you. With that being said, after all the experience I gained in Dark Souls Remastered and the first playthrough of uh, Dark Souls 3, when I came back in Journey 2, this boss was super easy to avoid. I found that you didn't even really need to roll a lot in Phase 1. You just gotta walk and get behind him and then smack him right in the ass. During phase 2 though, he does gain a few charging attacks that uh, can actually hit pretty hard, but as long as you can roll through them, you'll be just fine. After that, he almost always goes straight into this frost attack animation, which gives you tons of time to get behind him and continue to output damage. Vor is still a really cool boss, but definitely not a difficult one. Number 17, Curse Rotted Greatwood. Okay, this boss is seriously just nasty. In order to do any damage to him, you have to bust his balls, and I mean that quite literally. All this disgusting tree beast does is try to ass crash on top of you and piss acidic urine. Destroy its ball sacks ASAP to avoid the fight getting any more stupid, which it eventually does when he pulls out his fleshy arm to do some fun grabbing attacks. I'll give the Greatwood points for looking kinda cool, but in reality this fight just feels dragged out, long, boring, and it just pissed me off. Most of his attacks are pretty slow, but they seem kind of delayed, and so I actually ended up getting hit quite a bit. He gives you plenty of time to heal, but it's just annoying when you go right back into the combat to go after these stupid zits that you have to slice on him, and then you just get hit again. And I promise you, the bony arm that comes out of his intestines doesn't add anything interesting to the fight. All it really does is add another sweeping attack and a grab attack that gets me almost every time, because I just want to end this stupid boss so I don't have to fight it any longer. Number 16, High Lord Wolnir. I can easily say that Wolnir is my least favorite boss in the game. This gimmick fight is completely unmemorable. And all you feel is pure anger when his bullshit poison cloud kills you instantly or he summons a squad of skelly skanks. I'm getting needle flashbacks here. Break those bracelets as fast as you can to avoid any bullshit in this fight, which is pretty much the whole thing if you ask me. In order to beat this boss on your first try, you pretty much have to have a perfect blend of patience and uh, aggression at the same time. On one end, if you're too aggressive, he'll breathe a poison cloud and you'll be dead in seconds. On the other end, if you're not aggressive enough, he'll pull out a sword and have an increased number of attacks as well as the possibility of summoning a skeleton squad. I think in the end, we just all find it boring to have to chase around his annoying arms whenever he swings them around the map. That's basically all there is to this fight, unless you give him the time to pull out his sword and summon the squad of skeletons. And if you can manage to get him to not do that, you'll find that this fight is a thousand times easier. Number 15, Osiris, the Consumed King. Is it just me, or is this fight very RNG based? During my first playthrough, I was able to kill Osiris in 30 seconds on my first try because he seemingly would rather attack the walls than even take one look at me. During Journey 2, however, he was much more aggressive and actually killed me once with his AoE attack thingy. Despite this, I was able to get behind him again on my second try and take out my fury on this beast's booty. Fuck you and fuck your ocelot, Osiris. I couldn't possibly care less about your stupid dialogue, and I also don't understand why you're so stupid. Like, is this thing blind? Hello, I'm over here. Oh, yep, you see me? Oh, well, in 30 seconds I'll be behind you again anyway. Although I do think this fight is very RNG based, the best recommendation I can give is to stay really close to him unless he does his AoE. If he's not doing that, it should be very easy to avoid his charge attacks by just staying right and close to his back legs. For me, this fight always went one of two ways. The first way, I kill him in 30 seconds, or the second way, he kills me in 30 seconds. I really don't know what to think of Osiris, and I probably never will. Number 14, Abyss Watchers. 
Prepare yourself for one of the most epic fights in this game, and it's not even halfway through the story. Man, it was epic enough fighting one watcher, but when the other two joined in and you discover that one is actually on your side, it was very intense. The watchers are easy to stunlock in phase one, but phase two gets much more difficult. Even with complex moves, the watcher has a relatively small health bar, making this fight only a moderate challenge. I will admit that during my first playthrough, this fight was actually pretty challenging to me. It took me a few tries to even beat through phase one, and I thought that was the end of the fight right there. Just a simple fact that if you hit the Watcher a few times, you'll be able to stunlock him makes this fight so much easier, because if you have enough stamina to get lots of damage in, you'll be able to take advantage of the huge windows that he gives you to attack. Watch out for some of those fiery combos though, seriously. The whole stunlock thing goes both ways. The Watcher can do that to you as well, and it can very easily result in your death. This might actually be one of my favorite fights in the whole base game. It's only like the 4th or 5th boss that you fight in the game depending on what order you do things in, and I think that makes it one to remember. Number 13, Half-Light, Spear of the Church. To be fair, I don't really know what to think of ranking this boss. It's part PvP, so much of it is subjective. I actually summoned a friend in one on my second attempt, simply because it only seemed fair. This is also the only boss that I've fought in this game that I don't have footage of. I think it may have ranked higher if I were to solo it. Any gang NPC fight can be tough when there's only one of you. Number 12, Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. Aldrich is one of those bosses that's difficult until you figure out those little tricks that can make him a cakewalk. His melee attacks are no real concern, but they can be a hassle when you're trying to avoid spells or arrows at the same time. Don't forget about the pillars, they can really save you some trouble. Also, when he does the infamous arrow attack, run around him and the arrows will completely miss you. With all of this in mind, this boss is miles easier. I thought this boss was super tough during my first playthrough, but that was all because I wasn't utilizing my environment. Another fun fact that I eventually discovered in my second playthrough is that uh, if you uh, are standing on one side of the map when he teleports, he'll actually show up on the other side, so you'll kind of know where to go. I know a lot of people will probably think that this guy deserves a top 10 spot, but in actuality, I just feel like his melee moves are so easy to avoid. His snake-like appearance allows him to get behind and basically avoid them without even having to dodge. Even if you do get hit with his melee attacks, they don't do a lot of damage as long as you're using the right armor and the right shield. And that leaves you with basically his spell and uh, arrow attacks that you have to really worry about. I'd also like to mention that in Journey 2, he didn't even use the arrow attack at all on me during my fight with him. Number 11. Now I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me putting Old Demon King this high up on the list, but I just had a tough time with this fight in Journey 1. I'm very well aware that people think he's easy, but I'm entitled to my own opinion and I could never quite figure out how to avoid those stupid fire AoEs that he would constantly emit. Even after finally learning his moveset and beating him, I just found this fight to be annoying and it felt like a slightly harder reskin of the Demon Fire Sage from Dark Souls 1. With all of that said, he does look very cool and he really does act like an old Demon King. Sometimes the fight can actually look very dazzling, even with fire rings spreading all over the place and meteors flying at you. But unfortunately, that's all I really have to say about this unoriginal boss that I will probably skip in future playthroughs, since he is optional. Number 10, Dragon Slayer Armor. Wow, what an awesome fight this was. This boss's lightning axe will make short work of any st shield stability you may have, but his swing attacks are pretty easy to avoid. I found his most unpredictable attack to be the shield bash. This can leave you open to unexpected counters. This boss also likes to deceptively drop to the ground, giving you a false sense of security when he's actually winding up for an AoE blast. Still, his slower speed made this fight more of a speed bump for me than anything else. I'm not by any means saying that this boss is easy. I know a lot of people really struggle with him, and I can see why. There's also an RNG factor to the fight where there's these uh, the flying moth thingies. Not really sure what they are, but they fly around the boss arena. 
And if they hit you with their mud attack while you're trying to fight the Dragon Slayer armor, you're going to have a really tough time. So when I do see this coming, which rarely do you see it actually coming before it happens, I tend to back away from them. Number 9, Champion Gunder. The Champion is a lot like Iudex in his first phase. I found it pretty easy to stay close and play it safe, moving far away from him when I needed to heal. His most dangerous move is the charging attack, but he can't even really do that until phase 2. That being said, a lot of his attacks are more unpredictable in phase 2 and they have a lot more reach. This guy also doesn't give you a whole lot of windows to attack or heal, so have fun with that. For me, this fight was a lot of uh, panic rolling that was sometimes successful and sometimes not successful. I feel lucky in Journey 2 for making it out my first try because I definitely was really sloppy fighting this guy. I even got cornered towards the end of the fight as you can see in the video. I think the only thing that really separates this guy from uh, the first Gunder fight at the very beginning of the game is how much more fast he is and unpredictable. Like I said, he gives you very few windows to actually attack or heal safely you'll end up getting countered most likely. But at least some of his attacks don't do a whole lot of damage. And he does telegraph some of his swings a lot, particularly the one that I just showed there where he uh, jumps into the air and flies across the map at you. Although this boss is essentially a reskin, I really like the fight and I think it's pretty epic. In fact, I like the untended graves as a whole, I think it's a really cool area in the game. Number 8 Demon Prince. The Demon Prince fight is probably my favorite gang fight in the game. Okay. I was about to call bullshit when I walked into the arena until I realized that the demons actually take turns being in a frenzied attack state. I was able to down both of them very oh, easily, but boy was I in for a surprise when phase 2 hit. The new Demon Prince is stronger, faster, and I found myself having trouble getting hits in. I ended up summoning a friend for this fight because I was so excited to get to the rest of the ring city. For the tip, I kind of wish that I didn't yes. though, because I definitely could have beaten this. The first phase is pretty damn easy, the only thing you really need to watch out for is when they're both attacking you at once. Otherwise, you just go for the one that's aggroed and uh, stay right behind him. I feel like it's pretty easy if you stay like under his back legs, which is a very good strategy for any boss that looks like this, honestly. Phase 2 was where I really struggled. The Demon Prince is very fast, and he tends to fly around a lot, so it was hard for me to get hits in, and I think I ended up just giving in to the difficulty. That only makes me all the more excited to do this fight in Journey 2, though, because I will definitely be soloing it a second time around. Oh, yes, so much health now. Number 7, Dancer of the Boreal Valley. The Dancer is one of my favorite bosses in the game. She has undoubtedly a dazzling appearance and a moveset like no other Soulsborne enemy. I found that there are several tricks that make this fight much easier. First, staying by her rear. Many of her crazy combos won't even hit you if you remain there, but if they do, prepare to die. Many of the dancer's combos last a long time and can result in instant death. A lot of her attacks also feel like they can come out of nowhere, so be ready to get caught off guard at times. This is not even mentioning her flaming AoE attack and her grab attack, which are both very devastating as well. Both of these attacks are uncommon, but when she does do them, it can present a challenge for players that like to stick close like me. The one thing that I think made this boss a little bit easier than the ones ahead on the list is that she gives you a lot of times to heal and attack when she's done with her long combos. Number 6, Lothric and Lorien. Not gonna lie, this boss frustrated the hell out of me, but after beating them, I really appreciate the unique challenge they present. Lorien's attacks in Phase 1 are pretty damn easy to avoid, after at least a little bit of practice, but the fact that he can teleport is a game changer. You don't have much time to react, or know what attack he's about to do when he suddenly appears behind you. It's even more difficult when you need to do all of this while avoiding Lothric's annoying spells. So obviously this boss gave me a lot of trouble in Journey 2 compared to the ones that have been previously mentioned on the list. I think that's mostly due to the unpredictability of the uh, teleportation mechanic in the fight. You really have no idea what he's going to do when he teleports and sometimes you lose focus on where he is. 
Some of Lorien's attacks right after he teleports can also have different wind-up times, so I tended to roll too early or too late at times. I found that the best strategy when Lothric starts shooting spells at you is to actually back away and just uh, deal with things one at a time. It's a lot easier that way. I also think the mechanic of phase 2 of this fight is really awesome. You can kill Lorien right off the bat, but unless you kill Lothric, he'll just heal him right back to full health. I used to hate this fight, but after doing it in Journey 2, I really think it's underrated. Number 5, Pontiff Sullivan. This boss represented the tension and difficulty of the Aritha of the Boreal Valley perfectly. His combos are ridiculously hard to entirely avoid, and he will happily jump across the area to interrupt your healing. I know, I know, you can parry this boss, but honestly his attacks are so unpredictable at times and his combos are so long that half the time I just don't even risk it. Attempting to parry him can very easily get you killed just as much as it can help in certain situations. I think that's really good boss design though. If you're going to make a boss parryable, make it one that's really difficult to read his attacks. In fact, I think Pontiff is the hardest boss to read in the entire game, so that makes him the perfect pick. The second phase is extremely unique in that he splits in two, the clone actually telegraphing what Pontiff is about to do. Keeping the clone alive actually helped me a lot during phase two, despite many close calls in the attempt that finally brought me victory. I think this is one of the only bosses that in Journey 2 I did not feel like I had a better grip on how to fight him than I did in the first playthrough. So with that in mind, I do feel very lucky to have only died to him three times in uh, New Game Plus. Pontiff is undoubtedly the Ornstein and Smo of Dark Souls 3, having many players getting frustrated enough to throw their controllers across the room. Number 4, Soul of Cinder. What a fitting final boss. Soul of Cinder has many different phases that he switches between in the first half of the fight. This makes it near impossible to memorize his moveset since he can adapt so quickly. I found it to be most difficult to conserve Estus during this fa first phase because of how erratic he was. I summoned a friend during my first playthrough but was able to take down the Lord of Cinder myself in Journey 2. And I must say that this is one of the toughest endurance fights I have ever played in a Souls game. He just has so many different attacks and you need to be very conservative with your Estus because most of the time I would get to phase 2 with only 9 or 10 left. I would be very intrigued to watch somebody do this fight without getting hit once because that would be near impossible if you play with melee. The hardest state in the first phase in my opinion is the one that I'm showing right now where he's using the curved sword because he swings that thing fast and unpredictably, not to mention that he can also hit you with spells. Oh well, at least you can stagger him, and in my opinion phase 2 is a touch bit easier but it's no less epic for sure. At this point, he adopts a lot of Gwyn's moves and even plays the theme in the background which is extremely epic. I honestly did not expect to win in the attempt that finally led to my victory in Journey 2, so I didn't even record most of it, which is unfortunate. Because this boss is just so fucking epic. Number 3, Slave Knight Gale. Oh my goodness. This has got to be my favorite boss Make in the entire move, series that I've played so far. Okay, I'm gonna try to heal. Uh, the second I'm gonna try I really to think this is the closest that we'll ever get to a that, perfect boss bitch. fight in a video game, and it's pretty much the final boss of Dark Souls 3 because, I mean, the Ring City is the final DLC, but, uh, yeah, this fight is just crazy difficult, but it's difficult in a really good way in that it challenges you to really learn his moveset and know it by heart in order to win. Gale's combos are really fast and they hit super hard, so if you miss one evasion, you could be dead. Not to mention, he has a ridiculous amount of health in three phases that are completely different. I don't actually have footage of phase one, but it's pretty traditional uh, three swing combos and you pretty much just have to memorize the moves. After that though, phase two and three get a bit more difficult because he uh, adopts some ranged attacks such as the crossbow and some spells. It only makes it even more epic that you fight him in the giant ring city oh, wasteland shit, yeah, and it looks so that. cool. This fight just feels so perfect because uh, the difficulty spike feels not unfair, it feels like it's a genuine challenge and it feels so good once you overcome a certain move that you didn't know how to avoid before. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I completely lost track of how many attempts it took me to kill this guy, but it was definitely more than 15. And the rush you get when you finally kill him is unimaginable. Oh! Oh, I did it! Oh my god! No way! Oh! Oh! Number 2, Nameless King. I think it's safe to say that even the most difficult of Souls bosses have a calculated moveset and once you finally learn the moveset, you're much more adept at taking them down. I have to say that the Nameless King had the most difficult to learn moveset for me. Phase 1 is very simple, and I was able to learn how to best the dragon very quickly, but in Phase 2, the King is relentless, sporting a ton of stab and thrust attacks. I really struggled to dodge these because they always seem to have smaller windups than they actually do. So although the king's attacks are fairly slow, his hits deal tons of damage and leave you open for merciless counterattacks. Sticking close to him seems ideal, but even sometimes his thrust attacks can still hit you when he does a 360 and completely wows you with how fast he can turn. Much like Slave Knight Gale, Nameless King also has a ton of HP in his second phase, making it really difficult to have enough Estus to last you the whole fight. And yeah, I actually did count how many times I died to this boss, and it was 22. I easily died to him more than any other boss in the game, and for good reason too. I don't think there's any doubt in the community that Nameless King is the hardest boss in the base game of Dark Souls 3. Now even with that said, there's still one boss in the DLC that I think is way harder than even the Nameless King. Number 1, Dark Eater Medir. If you didn't expect to see Medir in the top 3, I assume you haven't played the Ring City. This boss has an unprecedented amount of HP, extremely powerful attacks, and enormous hitboxes. Although some of his melee attacks are fairly simple to dodge, it can be difficult to conserve Estus if you are hit even a few times early on in the fight. Each attempt took me nearly 10 minutes to get him down to half health, and I could barely even get farther than that. I ended up summoning a friend for this fight, but it was still very difficult to pull off and no less epic to slay this legendary beast. I eventually discovered that the best thing to do about his fire attacks is to just block them and to do it at the right time. And in that way, he's a lot like Kalami, but his melee attacks and unbelievable amount of health just make this fight way harder than anything you could possibly imagine before you go into the fight. That makes Medir undoubtedly the hardest boss in Dark Souls 3 and maybe even the entire Souls series. I should note that I'll probably buy Dark Souls 2 and play that soon because it's the only one of the three base Dark Souls games that I haven't played. I've heard it has the most bosses and I'm very excited to start fighting them. In the meantime, let me know in the comments what your list would be. I think the best part of these games is how everybody has different opinions on bosses, areas, and ranking videos just like this one. Alright, I'm going to go continue on Journey 3. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.